guys, I'm Sally Lindley and welcome to Lindley Trends. Today I want to talk about one of um, the, another, bit, another big inspiration from the fall winter 2014 shows and that would be Rainer Fassbinder. Now Rainer Fassbinder was a, a German artist, uh, mostly filmmaker. He um, started out in theater and acting, he was born in 1945, he passed away in 82, excuse me, I had to look at my notes. Um, he passed away in 1982 of a drug overdose. And he was really interesting because he was a big part of the new German cinema movement. And Werner Herzog and many other influential people from post-war Germany were part of that whole crew. And I just want to take a look at his work because he was one of the most influential people in the Prada sh collection this season. So, you know, looking at the fact that Mucia Prada mentioned that his movie, The Tear The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kent, was her main inspiration, I feel like it's worth definitely worth a deep dive into all of Fastbinder's work to get some inspiration for Lindley Trends. So looking at um Fastbinder. His films are just completely incredible. He made over 40 films in 15 years. He was a freaking maniac and he kind of redefined the pace and the way that you can make films in this post-war German era. And I think what was interesting is his whole crew from technical to actors to, you know, production, everybody was what he considered his surrogate family. So he kind of created these relationships of all these people around him. Um, not to say they had the best relationship, apparently he had very violent and hard relationships with a lot of people around him, but he had a very close-knit family-style crew of people working on his films that allowed him to make so many films, you know, up to four and five, six films a year um, that were, you know, critically acclaimed and also uh, completely low budget. So I think I think what's interesting about Fastbinder, he was raised in um, post-war Germany, he was actually born two weeks after the um, the Americans had taken over Germany and forced them to surrender in World War II. So he was definitely living inside of a culture where the Germany was Germany was trying to, you know, f find an identity again in a culture out, out after the war. So. You know, and Fassbinder grew up in what would definitely be considered a broken home. His parents, you know, shuttled him back and forth between his aunts and his uncles. And he spent a lot of his time on his own growing up. Um, his mom, who would had tuberculosis over and over again, would send him out to the movies every day, give him money to go to the cinema. And he said growing up um, from, you know, elementary school on, he would see sometimes three or four films per day. So he created in his head the fantasy world of his family at the cinema. So I, I think it's interesting looking at his work. He, he also was um, uh, out, out of the closet homosexual from a very young age in his young adolescence. So it's always been a big part of his identity. And I think that, um, you know, why he is so relevant, especially towards the conversations that have been going on with all the artists we've been examining, whether it was Hannah Hoke or Lee Miller or, you know, the whole Bauhaus movement. The interesting thing about Fastbinder is he also had the conversation of sexual sexuality, politics, and racism that I think a lot of people in that post-German, post-World War II era were dealing with. And even, and even, you know, between World War I and World War II, there were a lot of the biggest artists in the world were struggling with these, you know, political, sexual, and um, racial conversations. So I think that looking at, you know, specifically, how do you apply this to fashion and beauty? And um, what I love about Fastbinder's films is it that even though the women can be in quite tragic circumstances, um, there there's always an underlying power to the way they look to me, and there's a, there's a there's always a beauty. And but there's also he he very much shows that kind of he he very much shows that the more over the top you are on the outside, kind of the more vast loneliness and emptiness there can be on the inside. So I think looking at that, for Muchia Prada to choose that as an inspiration for her collection is very interesting because, you know, she she's always having those conversations about, you know, she's she's the kind of woman who doesn't wear a lick of makeup. 
and who rarely wants her photo taken. But she creates some of the most beautiful clothing in the world. And, you know, I, I don't know. I think that it's a, it's the same conversation that I've been having in this, the, the, the Lindley Report, the Lindley Trends before now, that, you know, it, it's um, the, the conversation of beauty and what is considered beauty and what's important is changing. And looking at the Fast Binder film, specifically The Better Tears of Patricia Von Kent, the, the, the plot line is um, a fashion designer who kind of is kind of starting to lose her mind from a second divorce and falls in love with one of her models who's a working class girl. And um, that model starts treating Petra like very abusive, like Petra treats her assistant. So it's interesting for, you know, Muchia Prada to choose a character that's a fashion designer. It's, um, the, the clothing is, the clothing is that 70, that late 70s vibe, which I love. I love, but also there's very much a throwback to the 30s and 40s, which of course I love. And I always love it when the 70s and 80s did throwbacks to that generation of the 30s and 40s. I think it added some weir weird surrealness to the clothing. You can definitely see the 70s inspiration inside of the product collection when you look at it next to the Fast Finder work. Um, you, yeah, so I think that, you know, that 70s chic is an underlying thing that's been running through fashion in general for the fall winter shows. And I think the Fast Finder view of the 70s and of beauty and his political conversations about sexuality and and racism and all these things are very important to how people are having conversations about that now with globalization and fashion especially now that you know with e-commerce and everything that's happening inside of fashion that you really have in with the internet you just have access to everyone and it's really about dressing everybody and not specifically one culture or one place anymore. So yeah, looking at looking at fashion and beauty from a fast binder perspective and working to apply this to your fashion or beauty company, I would really think about the definitely take a look at all of his films. They're beautiful. I'll list I'll have everything, all the DVDs available here and I'll any books and stuff that I can get my hands on, I'll make sure to do links below. Um but I would definitely watch all of his films. It's a great place to start from a visual standpoint for inspirations, whether you're designing a collection um, or for art direction or for beauty. Um, and see, like, how do you take something like Fast Finder and his very, very clear visual direction in his films and apply it to how women want to dress now? And I feel like, you know, he was he was very inspired by Cleopatra and, C, you know, C. C. DeMille. And, you know, there's some Metropolis, definitely some of those 30s, 30s vibes, 30s and 40s vibes, very much inspired Fastbinder's work. So taking a look up, how do you take 70s version of 30s and 40s and make it relevant for the woman today, comfortable, how she wants to dress. Um, and I think, again, this, this whole era is interesting because at Celine, she was also doing this 30s and 40s via 70s kind of thing but you know, taking the beauty to a very minimal level, so it made it feel more updated. So yeah, so take a look at the Fast Finder work, think about how you can relate it to your fashion business or your beauty business, and um, definitely do, I would recommend watching as many of his films as possible, they're incredible. I've done several shoots on them over the past couple years. He's always been a big inspiration to me and a lot of my photographer friends, so I'm happy to bring you Fast Finder's work here. So check it out and I will see you guys in the next episode of Lindley Trends.